Hello everybody, my name is Abuna Weisberry, and today we'll be doing a problem from advanced algebra, also known as group theory. Just as a disclaimer, I didn't come up with these problems or ideas myself, obviously. I didn't invent all of group theory. So I thought you invented algebra. All of this material, my whole understanding of it, as well as the problem that I'm going to cover today, is sourced from Michael Arden's Algebra 2nd Edition. Which you can find online. And you can also find the solution manual online. So you can see the solution. To, uh, you can see their solution to my problem if you want to. Well, not my problem, technically. But the problem I'm going to cover today. All right. So what is our problem? Well, here's what we're going to do. This is problem 8.10 in chapter 2 of Arden's book. What is it? Let H be a subgroup of G with index 2. Show that H must be normal. And additionally, So why this isn't necessarily true. Now, of course, this isn't the exact wording, but it's the same problem. So how do we solve this? First of all, what do any of these words mean? So let's examine the word subgroup first. What is a subgroup? Well, here's what a subgroup is. We can see from the textbook, it's explained in like the first few pages, because this is group theory, of course, that a group must have three properties. It must have an identity under a specific operation. So a group is a set paired with an operation. So it must have an identity. Every element must have an inverse. And there must be associativity. Oh, and you can't just associate any set to any operation. The operation specifically has to be binary. And the set specifically has to be closed under the operation. So it's natural that these rules also apply to subgroups. The only difference is that subgroups uh, take only some of the elements of regular groups. Like, for example, the integers over addition and the nth multiple of the integers, which is essentially all the numbers that are like minus 2n, minus n, n, 2n, etc., going both ways, over addition. This is a direct subgroup of this because it holds all the same properties. There's definitely an identity, that being zero. There's definitely an inverse since there were negative numbers. And there's associativity because, you know, it's addition. And uh, those same rules hold here. And we can prove a number of different things about groups and subgroups. Like, for example, that a group and its subgroup will always have the same identity. But now, what we're going to be doing is something different. So now, let's talk about what an index is. So to talk about indices, we need to talk about cosines.
a comb set is pretty special because you probably, if you've read this far into the book, already know about cyclic groups. And these are just groups that are generated by one element, i.e. every single element of the group can be re uh, represented as a one specific element, cross itself, cross itself, some number n times. So, one example of a cyclic group is the integers. But some other examples are the integers modulo 12, which makes the clock, or some things you can come up with off the top of your head. Like, there are cyclic groups generated by the powers of certain matrices. Like, 1, uh, one, one, one zero, for example, or actually this one reduces faster, so I'll go with that actually has a very small cyclic group. If you square this, it gives you 1, 2, 0, 1. And actually, this is going to be modulo 3. It has a very small group. If you do this again, then it gives you 1, 3, 0, 1. But mod 3, this is just 0, which gives you the identity. Meaning that if you multiply the by this again, it gives you back the first matrix meaning this is a cyclic group of order 3. So, this is how we can generate a cyclic group. But now, I mean, what's the relation between this and indices and cosets? Well, not all groups are cyclic. First truth. Some are generated by more than one element. So, what we can do instead to decompose these groups is we can decompose them into two equal size sets. One of them is going to be a regular subgroup, H, and the other one is going to be the same subgroup multiplied, or well, crossed, because it could be any operation, by any element of the group. And of course, since this has to be closed under this operation, that means that this is, of course, still in G. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in H. So this is what we call a coset. And in this form, it's a left coset. And in this form, it's a right coset. And you might say, aren't those the same? But remember, not all groups are abelian. Don't think of your familiar operations. Because these operations aren't always commutative. Matrix multiplication, for example, isn't commutative at all. So... Not all groups are cyclic, but they can be decomposed into, essentially, kind of like subdivisions of a group that share a common multiple. And if you're familiar with the concept of span in linear algebra, you'll know that this is essentially analogous. So that's what a coset is. But what is an index? Well, if eight has index 2, where H is a subgroup of G, then that means G can be written as essentially the sum of H and a left coset or H and a right coset. If it has order 3, then there are two different cosets along with H. And one more thing to say is this isn't called a co-group, it's called a coset. Why? Because it doesn't necessarily have to follow all of these rules that a regular group has to follow. It's, it acts just like a set. It doesn't even have an operation associated with it. H is definitely still a group, but G cross H or H cross G doesn't have to be. All right. So 
If H has index 2, then G can be broken down into the two equal size sets, H and G cross H. All right, so finally, what does normal mean? Well, that just means that under conjugation, H maps to itself. And what does that mean? Well, conjugation is when on the left, you multiply an element of the set by an element of the, an element of the subgroup by an element of the larger group. On the right, you multiply the element by an inverse of that same element of the larger group. And now, uh, this has to map to another element in H. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same element, but it still has to map to another element in H. So it's kind of like a map from H to itself. And of course, this isn't satisfied by every single group. That's why it's very special for a group to satisfy this. We'll talk about the purpose of group satisfying this later. So that's what it means to be normal, to be a coset, to have an index, and to be a subgroup.